Historians have often commented on Thomas Edison's film titled What Happened on 23rd Street by discussing the ending that shows a woman's dress being blown upward by an air shaft from a newspaper company. But if we start the film from its beginning, if we look closer at history, if we search for something different, we find that while we are watching them, one of them is watching us. A young boy stands on the left side of the frame, arms behind his back, observing the filmmaker and moving left or right when people block his view of the camera. Just as we're interested in viewing life in motion more than a century ago, we receive back the boy's interest in the filmmaker and the beginning of motion pictures. In viewing the lengthy film and seeing the boy's keen interest, one might feel a connection to the past. Almost as if the boy is looking at us more than 115 years into the future. As the woman approaches and laughs, we see the final glimpse of the unknown boy, just as he begins to walk directly toward the viewer. This is the final frame of the film, a window into the past to the boy's only moments recorded in history. While we will never know who the boy was, where he lived, if he married and had children, or when he passed away, there are fascinating stories to be uncovered with the advent of new technology. One of the greatest stories yet to be told to today's generation, 1894's The Sidewalks of New York. The New York Times would one day ask, is the sidewalks of New York to become the new national anthem? Friday evening, March 2nd, 1894. It's ladies' night in the Anawanda Club on 2nd Avenue, the local Tammany building. Charles Murphy, later known beginning in 1903 as Tammany's Boss Murphy, is enjoying an evening as host. With beer and champagne flowing, all of those in attendance were enjoying the singing of Charles Lawler. By this point in 1894, Lawler had been on numerous stages, not just in New York, but around the country. Many of the men that evening were Lawler's friends. After a lively party and plenty of drinks, he stumbled out of the bar and onto the sidewalk, roaming around town under the relatively new electric lights. As he walked the streets late in the night, the music for a tune that had been rattling around in his head for some time began to come together. He walked home that evening, traveling by foot all the way up to 114th Street and 8th Avenue, more than 100 blocks north and 6 west. Pieces of the tune's twists and turns kept coming and going in Lawler's mind about the jovial and wonderful childhood days of yesteryear. A simple tune, yet one that would for so many touch a nostalgic and emotional tone, reminding those who would listen of some of their fondest memories, so that for but a moment they could forget their troubles and be transported back to their youth. Music 